thank you that today I am anointed by you to preach the gospel. Help me articulate exactly what you want said today. Help the people's minds be pliable and, 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 and just be like a soil ready to receive the incorruptible word of the living God. Let it produce fruit in their life. And in anybody that come in contact with, let it just produce and always work in their lives. We love you in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. 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 Open your Bibles this morning to Luke chapter 5. I believe Luke chapter 5. Meet me at verse 12. I've got some, uh, just something on my heart I just want to share with you today and talk to you about and really minister to you. Are we dismissing our super leaders? Super leaders, you are dismissed to your class. Luke chapter 5, verse 12, it'll be on the screen there as well. I'm inspired this morning by this passage of scripture. And it happened when he was in a certain city that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus and he fell on his face and implored him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. I forgot to say, if you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. Our ushers want to pass a Bible out to you. Raise your hand. You can, you can use one of our Bibles there as well. And as always, we are live on social media, so you can grab your devices, click share, and um, let's broadcast this word all the way around. Amen? I said amen. 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 And those of you watching on social media, thank you so much for watching. I believe that the word of God is going to impact your life today as well. Luke chapter 5, verse 12, and it happened when he was in a certain city that, behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus, and he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord... If you are willing, you can make me clean. And the next verse, he says, then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy left him. Now, this passage of scripture is found also in Mark chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 8. So it's found in three separate places in the gospel. And we see here in verse 12, and I like Luke's passage because Luke is a physician. Luke is a doctor, and so Luke has given us a diagnosis that it's different than what Mark gave us in Mark chapter 1 and then what Matthew gave us in uh, Matthew chapter 8. Luke is sharing with us uh, that this man is full of leprosy. So this man has stage 4 leprosy. Leprosy is a disease in that time that was believed to be contagious and this disease, that's why lepers were kept afar off from the camp, because people felt like if you get sneezed on or touched or coughed on, this disease could impact you. It sounds a little bit like today, but in different names. What we're going through in, in China and in, in other countries, and, 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 you know, I just heard recently, well, what is that disease called? Corona? Yeah, coronavirus, and, and people are scared, and it sounds a little like today that people have been impacted because there's been a disease that's considered to be contagious. And this man, stage four leprosy, I mean, he's full of leprosy, and he, I, I like that he's nameless, uh, because I'll, I'll get back to that, but I like that it's a nameless man because uh, what God has done for others he would do for us as well. And so this man shows up to Jesus, bows down, begins to worship him. And this man says to Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Or you can heal me if you are willing. Uh, this is so interesting to me because even in today's society, people are asking, is it God's will? for me to be healed. And there are certain denominations, there are certain groups of people that would say, well, we never know what God's will is concerning healing. We never know what his will is. Um, some people decide that God's will is simply whatever happens on the earth has to be God's will. So your dog got ran over by the FedEx truck and somebody would say, that's the will of God for your life. Everything that happens on this earth is not the will of God. And when you talk about the will of God, we have to really consider, listen to me now, we have to really consider which will of God are we talking about. And, and this concept of God's will 
is so important in today's society. People don't know what the will of God is. And when you talk about the sovereign will of God, the, the sovereign will of God, simply, if I can break it down so that you can understand, the sovereign will of God is simply God is in control of things that are out of your control. That's the sovereign will of God. He's in control of the things out of your control. Well, well give me an example. Well, just like elections. Whoever wins, that's completely out of your control. All you can do is vote, and whoever wins, wins, and you got to trust that the sovereign will of God is being done on the earth, that, hey, that's out of my control, and I'm trusting that's what God wants to take place because it's out of my control, and it's the sovereign will of God. Many of you, I like to use this as an example. You can't control if you're going to have a boy or a girl. You get pregnant, you get married, you get pregnant or whatever, and you have a baby, and you can't control what, what gender that baby is going to be. You can't control that. I just got to trust that the sovereign will of God is being manifested in my life because God is in control of the things that are out of my control. Well, then you have the perfect will of God. So you got the sovereign will of God. When someone talks about the will of God, we got to figure out which one are you talking about? The sovereign will of God, God's in control of the things that are out of my control. The perfect will of God is the revealed will of God. It's the will of God that's written in the word. It's what we find in scripture. It's the perfect will of God. And in that perfect will, you can access everything that God wants you to have because it's found in the word. That's the perfect will of God. Nothing contrary to that will is uh, his will. Whatever's found in the word is his will. And whatever's not found in the word that you're dealing with is not in his will. Amen. Are you understand what I'm saying this morning? So the perfect will of God is the revealed will of God that's found in his word. So we have the sovereign will of God. He's controlling things that are completely out of my control. The perfect will of God. He's telling me exactly what he wants to take place right here in his word. And then we have the permissive will of God, which is simply, uh, you know, hey, God's going to let you do whatever you want to do. He's going to let you do whatever you want to do. And that's his permissive will. He, he, we are, listen, we are um, beings that have a will. We have our own will. That's why Jesus had to say, not my will, <laughs> but thy, thy will be done. We have a will, and the permissive will simply is God is just going to let you do whatever you decide to do. And you reap the consequences of whatever you decide to do. That's the permissive will of God. He's going to allow you to do whatever you decide to do. But we find out here in Luke chapter 5, and let's look at that again in verse 12. This man shows up to Jesus. This man shows up. To Jesus In John chapter 1, we find out that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This man showed up to the Word. This man showed up to God. Jesus is God. He shows up to God. He says, if you are willing, you can make me clean. If it be thy will, how many of you heard that? If it be thy will. I grew up in the church. They used to pray that all the time. They would pray and then they would say, if it be thy will. And that was just kind of tradition. If it be thy will. Well, the perfect will of God is found in the word of God. And I don't have to say, if it be thy will, his will is found in his word. And if I just pray his word, I'm praying his will. I know what his will is. And now listen to this. And faith begins where the will of God is known. You can't have no faith if you don't know what his will is. No faith. If you don't know what his will is, so we got to look in the revealed perfect will of God, find out what his will is, and pray his will, and we can eliminate if it be thy will. Eliminate that completely because we find out what his will is. This is his will. Psalms 103 says that there are benefits <laughs> of serving the God, you know, healing and forgiveness. I mean, this is the will of God that I walk in these things. So this man shows up. And he says to God, he goes to the word and he finds out, let me go to the word and let me find out in the word, is the word willing to heal me? 
<laughs> this is so good if you get this, is the, if I look in the word, can I find somewhere in the word that God said no? Somebody goes to, goes to God and says, will you heal me? And God said no. Can you find that anywhere? Did Jesus tell anybody anywhere no? You cannot be healed. Can you find that in scripture in the perfect will of God? Can you find that anywhere? Matter of fact, it, in Psalms 107, 20 says it this way, I, he sent his word and healed him. So if you, if you spent all of your productive time in the word, there's healing found in that word of God that will take care of any sickness, disease that you are dealing with. If it was against the will of God for you to be healed, why did he send his word and heal you? If it's against the will of God, why does he say, I am the Lord that healeth thee? In Exodus 15, 26, he's going to have to change his name if he's not healing anymore. He's going to have to change his name if he's no longer interested in your health. Just go ahead, change your name because, you know, God doesn't heal anymore. And, you know, it may not be the will of God. Well, this man finds out that it's the will of God in the next verse. But let me back up there before I get there. I want to back up there because this nameless man walks up to Jesus, walks up to the word himself and says, is it your will for me to be healed? He didn't question his ability. He questioned his willingness. I would rather serve a God who was willing to heal me yet unable, then serve a God who was able to heal me and yet unwilling. Let that sink in. This man shows up, nameless man. He shows up to Jesus and says, is it your will? Is it your will? I know you're able. I know you can do it. I know your ability. I know your power. I just don't know if it's your will. I don't know if you want to do that. I, I don't know if you desire to do that. Now, if you go to Romans chapter 2, we'll look at verse 11 here real quick. Romans chapter 2, jot this down, verse 11. It says, for there is no partiality with God. So this nameless man shows up, and we find Paul tells us in Romans 2, 11, there is no partiality with God. Let's go to Acts 10, 34. Jot this down, Acts 10, 34. It says, then Peter opened up his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. Huh. Let's go to Galatians 2, 6. Jot this down. Galatians 2, 6. Watch this. It says, but from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man. God shows personal favoritism to no man. And let's go to, uh, what is it, Ephesians 6, 5. Ephesians 6, 5. Or 6, 9, I'm sorry, Ephesians 6, 9. And you, masters, do the same things to them, giving up threatenings, knowing that your own master also is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. Somebody say, no partiality. No partiality. That simply means God is not prejudiced. God's not biased. God's not discriminating. God plays no favorites. If he did it for this nameless man, he can, he can do it for me. If, if this nameless man goes to Jesus and says, are you willing? Then bless God, if he's willing to heal him, he's willing to heal me too. Are you, are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Because this is powerful because in the moment of pain, and when the pain lasts even longer than you think it should, can you still answer, God is still willing to heal me? Yeah. He's still willing to heal me. Now, if, <laughs> if Jesus said something different to this man than he says to you and I, it means he changed. Well, well let's look at the verse. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jot that down. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, come on, read it with me. 
Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and so if he said something different to me than he said to this man, then he changed. His answer changed. Then he changed. But we find in Scripture that he's the same. His response is the same. We see it in three different passages of Scripture. This same man shows up to Jesus and says, are you willing? And Jesus says, I am willing. Or we can interpret in today's society, it is my will. It is my will. It is my perfect will. The, it is my revealed will. It's exactly what I want to take place. I am willing. So if he said it to this man who's dealing with leprosy, stage four, he's an outcast, he's, he's, fix, he's fixing to die, and he says, is it my will... Or is it your will, Lord, to heal me? And he responds, I am willing. Then that should tell you and I today that God is ready and God is willing to heal. Now, I, I, I want you, to, I want you to, to think about this for a moment because I was meditating on this and there are people that are dealing with lagging pain, lagging hurt, uh, whether it be sickness, whether it be disease, whether it be uh, diabetes, whether it be uh, upper respiratory issues or liver issues or back issues or feet issues or neck issues, what, whether it be mental health issues. People are experiencing pain, whether it be a divorce, whether it be brokenheartedness, whether it be just simply I'm frustrated, my expectations have not been met, and, and people are in pain, people are hurting, and they believe that this is God's will for them to be in that, that condition or situation. They believe this is exactly what God wants for me to be going through. And this man shows up and he says, are you willing? I know you're able, but are you willing? I don't know that answer. I don't know if you're willing. And the next verse in, John, in Luke chapter 5, 13, we find that Jesus says right away, I am willing. Now that should bring so much comfort and peace to our hearts that he is willing. I'm willing. Um, the Devon translation says, I'm ready. <laughs> I, I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I, I really want to. I really want to. I really want to get in there because I'm ready to heal. And, and I love there, put it up on the screens, I Luke 5, 13. I love, he says, I am willing, be cleansed. And then immediately the leper, leprosy left him. But let's back up to the first part. He put out his hand and touched him. You're not supposed to touch lepers. Because it's contagious, right? You can get it too. But he said, listen, I'm willing to heal. I'm ready. I really want to. He reached out and he touched him and he transferred the power on the inside of him to that leper's, that leper's body. He, he transformed the anointing on the inside of him to that body on the inside of that sick person. In today's uh, society, oh, don't touch me. I don't want to touch you. Don't touch me. You got power on the inside of you. Amen. You better release that power on somebody and say, no, be healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, are you too scared to run? I don't want to. Don't, don't touch. Oh, don't touch. Don't touch. Man, you, you walk around with all this power. You better, you better plug it in on something. And release it and say, no, 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 no. Your kid's sick. Oh, we got to stay away from the kids. No, nah, bring them kids on in here in Jesus' name. Amen. Be healed. And rebuke that sickness off of them in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm not a, listen, I'm not a fool. If you got little kids in the home, I know that little kids love to get, you know, make sure stuff is clean, alcohol stuff down. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about, right? Get, keep it clean. Wash hands. 
But don't be scared of sickness and disease. Listen to me now. Don't be scared of it. Jesus is willing to heal. And you can get, your, your spirit can get so strong that it, I'm telling you what, you can, your, your body will just resist it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And say, don't come near me. And if it jump on you, say, nope, 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 I'll not have it. I'll not have it that way. I remember when I was in Bible school, this man used to preach, and he'll say, if you get sick, you know how you get mail? <laughs> you get mail, and it, your name, it's not your name, it's somebody else's name, and you used to write on there, return to sender, and you stick it back. In. He said, when your sickness try to come on you, you just say, return to sender, and send it right back to the pits of hell where it belongs. Amen. 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 He says, I'm willing to heal. And I looked up this word heal the other day, and this just exploded on the inside of me. I looked up the word heal, and the word heal means to bring to an end. To, it means to conclude or to have closure. <laughs> Man, that, that definition impacted me. Why? Because sickness is running its course, but healing is going to bring it to an end. Today is the day. The healing brings it to an end. It's, there's closure there. This man was saying, I've got leprosy. Will you bring this leprosy to an end? Are you willing to bring it to Are you willing to conclude it? Are you willing to stop it? Are you willing to bring some closure to this leprosy I'm going to? And Jesus said, I am willing. It is my will. Be cleansed or be healed or stop sickness. Hallelujah. So, so when you, when you talk about healing, it's not just sickness and disease. It includes it for sure. But we, we can be healed from a broken heart. In Luke 4, 18, right, Jesus gets up and he reads the, the book of Isaiah and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. Hallelujah. What does that mean? I'm going to bring brokenheartedness to an end. There could be pain that you're going through. Maybe not physical. Maybe it's mental pain. Maybe it's even spiritual pain. Healing comes and brings that pain to an end. There's closure there. there, there there's there's no, uh, no more pain. This is what healing does. No more. It says no more. No more. No more. Somebody say no more. No more. This is what healing says. No more. There, there could be uh, situations you've gone through with family members that you just say, man, I, I'm just, I'm to this point with my family. You know, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with that. God is willing to bring healing. Bringing that animosity to an end. Hallelujah. And there be no more pain. No more strife. No, no, this is what he's willing to do. He, he's saying, I really want to bring this to an end. I want it to stop. I want it to conclude. This is the healing that he's talking about. Many of us. Are dealing with there if, if I would if, if well you wouldn't say it if I had a microphone but if I was with you by yourself somewhere you are dealing with something that you don't even you wouldn't we wouldn't even know you wouldn't even tell us we wouldn't even know I'm telling you right now God wants to get into that inner workings or wherever you are whatever you're dealing with and he wants to bring it to an end hey I want to stop that you know he can change your heart he can give you a brand new heart, physically as well as spiritually. He can take out the old, crudded, beat up, stony heart and give you a brand new heart. And, here, and here's the thing that, that, that loves me. It's not even, we're not even talking about his ability. We're talking about his willingness. This is what's so cool is that He's really ready. What is he waiting on? He's waiting on you and I. He's waiting on, you can't give something to someone that they don't want. I can try to force it. I told y'all about the $50 bill I had. 
have a fifty dollar bill, and I wanted to give this fifty dollar bill to someone. I had it in my pocket. We we had planned to give it, and we walked up to the lady and I said, "Stacy and I, we want to bless you with fifty dollar bill." She said, "No, no, 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 no. I'm not worthy." She said, "No, no, 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 no. I I I don't. No, 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 no." No, it, it was almost like we, we had given, you know, uh, a rat or something to her, you know. <laughs> she was like, no, no, I, I don't want the rat. Don't give me no rat. I'm going to say no to a rat. But, and she was like, no, 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 not worthy. You know what I did with that $50 bill? Put it right back in my pocket. I said, well. And then I got home. I thought, man, I wonder why she didn't receive that, that $50 bill. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, there are millions of people I want to give stuff to. And they don't want it. They don't want it. They don't, they, don't, they don't believe it's my will for them to even have it. Now, I know that's a, a simple example, but, I mean, how many times? I, I was talking to someone th the other day, and we were talking about um, something big, and I made the statement, well, and I said, I said well, uh, I, and I, can I, I'm just going to tell them myself. I was talking about something big, and I made this statement. I said, well, I don't need a million dollars. What I need is I need this and that, and the Lord corrected me and said, well, why can't you take a million dollars? Why can't I take a million? Well, because we're always thinking about our limits and what we deserve and what we think about ourselves. And we don't limit, or we don't, we're limiting ourselves and we're limiting God. And when that came out of my mouth, I don't need a million dollars. The Spirit of God immediately arrested me and said, well, why don't you need a million dollars? What could you do with a million dollars? I said, well, I can do all this. Well, why did you say you don't need it? And I'm not talking personal. I'm talking about ministerial laws. Why, why did you say you don't need it? I said, oh, Lord. See, I found. Are y'all with me today? I, I, I found my choking point. How many of y'all say, you, you know what I'm talking about. How many of y'all say, you know, you, you, you say something, then you come out of your mouth. Well, you, you know, well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really don't need to be healed. I just need to, you know, just feel better for today. No, just take the healing too. That's right. Take it too, praise God. He's willing. Yes. It is all about are you able to receive it? Amen. It's mine. I take it. Everything you have for me. I, I enlarge my capacity yes. to receive more from God. I, 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 I open up my mind and, 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 I, and I, I, I want more from God. From God, G give it to me, Lord. I, 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 I want it. I, 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 can, I can handle it. But here's the thing. If you can't handle where you are right now, you, God's not going to give you more. If you, if you are overwhelmed where you are now, you're going to be overwhelmed with more. What that old rapper used to say, uh, more, more money, more problems. More money, more problems. You think you got problems now? Money's just going to amplify. So you think money going to fix your problems. That's what the spirit of mammon has told you. Who am I talking to today? The spirit of mammon said money, if you just have more money, it's going to fix everything that you need. No, it ain't about money don't fix. Money don't fix everything that you got a problem with. Right. Amen. Amen. I want to open up my capacity to receive more from God. So I've been, I've been trying to watch my words. I got caught the other day when I made that statement. I was talking about something with the ministry, and then I said, you know, I don't need a million dollars. What I need is this and that, and if we got this. And, this, and, 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 and I thought, well, why did I say that? And, I, and you got to figure out, you got to figure out why. Well, you know, the doctor said, I'm going I'm to I'm deal with this lower back thing the rest of my life, and some days is good, some days. Why not just, why not, I believe God, that I don't ever have to deal with this no more again. And, and you might have to do some things in the natural, whatever the case may be. Because, look, can I talk to you this morning? Uh, we like supernatural healing. That's great. Where you wake up one morning and you feel great. But you know you can be healed other ways than that? Yeah. Did you know that there are natural ways that God can use to heal you? Listen to me now. I, I was talking to a guy about this. And, and he was saying that, you know, the best way God wants to do it, he wants to do it supernatural. That's the best way to do it. And, and, and you know, I, I do believe God wants to do some things supernaturally. But at the same time, God might tell you, drink more water. No. Well, I don't want to drink no more. I just want to wake up in the morning and, and I just want to be feeling, feeling great. Uh, drink more water. You can be healed through drinking more water. 
There was a man one particular time. I'm just, I'm just talking to y'all this morning. There was a man one time we were, we were praying. And I think we were in the other building. We were, yeah, we were praying. And the man came up. He said, Pastor, pray. I got all these issues right up in here. And I said, hallelujah. And I got ready to put my hands on and lay hands because I believe in laying hands and, and, and laying hands on the sick. And they become, I believe in that. And that's right when I got ready to lay hands. The Spirit of God spoke to him and said, don't lay hands on him. I put my hands back. And he said, tell him to drink more water. I said, brother, how, how much water do you drink? He said, I don't drink enough. Drink more water. I said, keep it moving. Drink more water. <laughs> and all of that is going to be taken care of. Am I telling the truth? You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. The body needs natural things. There are natural things the body needs. And we just, give it to me spiritually, Lord. I just want to go to sleep and wake up and everything be all right. And the Lord telling you, nah, you need to, you need to hit that weight room. Get on that treadmill. Oh, I'm going to wake up. I'm 50 pounds going to be gone when I get up. Supernatural <laughs> weight loss. I got to tell y'all this story. We family, right? I got to tell y'all this story. So I used to work this job, and at this particular job, I was working 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. And so, you know, I'm black, and, you know, I need some lotion, okay? I need some lotion. And, and when you had to get to work at 5, I, you know, I was barely waking up to get there by 5. And I had time to put some lotion on all the time. So I had lotion at my desk. So I would come in, and I would go to my desk, and there was some lotion there, and I would put lotion on. This man stood up, and he walked up to me. He came around the, you know, we had cubicles. He came around the cubicle, and he said, that's that fake moisturizer. <laughs> I said, well, now, what are you talking about? He said, that's, that's that fake moisturizer. That, that, what you got? That lo that's fake moisturizer. He said, I don't need to use that. I said, oh, okay. He said, uh, I get my moisture from the word. He said, I just read the word, and moisture just comes all over my body, and I don't need that fake moisture. <laughs> and so I thought, this dude's joking. I'm laughing, and he's all like, mm -mm. if you get in the word, you will be moisturized. <laughs> so I had a good friend, and, uh, and this good friend had lost a lot of weight. I mean, Dan, my good friend Dan, he'll probably listen to this too. He lost a lot of weight, and um, he had lost over 100 pounds. I mean, he really was after losing weight. And the man walked up, to, the man was a little heavy too, and the man walked up to him and said, man, how did you lose the weight? So, so Dan knew this story. He said, man, how did you lose this weight? Dan said, oh, my goodness, you, you don't know? He said, no. He said, man, I just read the word, and weight just falls off. He said, I woke up in 100 pounds. It was just gone. Just I was just reading the word. And the man said, for real? <laughs> he said, no, man. I've been working out. I've been eating better. I've been exercising. You, there's some things in the natural. Come on, somebody. That you're going to have to do. And that's also healing. That's healing as well. It's not always just supernatural. There's healing involved in that as well. His weight gain, the healing brought a closure to weight gain through exercise. Amen. And drinking water and eating right, the weight came off. Now, should you still read the word? Absolutely. Right? But it's not the word only that the weight loss. It's not the word only sometimes that super, that, that, that let me say it this way, supernatural healing takes place in your life. It's, it's not, there, there are times that you, listen to me now, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm raising an intelligent group of people that you might need to go to the doctor yeah. Amen. and say, hey, I need some natural things, what can I do? Now, if the doctor, if the doctor say, I'm going to give you 25 shots, you say, no, thank you, and you keep it moving, right? You can say no. Right. Come on. You can say no to the doctor, but it's okay to go. Yeah. Say, what is it? You know what? If you do this and that, this and that. I remember Stacy one time had something going on with her thumb. And she was like, you know, I'm going to go to the doctor. I said, yeah, just go get that checked out. Man, they, they did something. They, they stuck a little something in there and the thumb, she ain't had no problems ever since. Now, we could have been, we, now, could, could the word have healed her thumb? Absolutely. Are you willing to add patience to that? Because yeah. nothing really works, not all the time, instantly. Are y'all getting something today? Some things just take time. And they did something with her thumb, and she, we were talking about this, so she ain't never had another problem with the, with the thumb again. Just simply going to the doctor, the doctor said, oh, yeah. It had nothing to do with her spirit or her soul. It had everything to do with her body. Healing can 
can take place. Luke is a doctor in scripture. We're talking about a physician that wrote a book of the Bible. Well, I don't go to the doctor. Boy, this doctor was writing scriptures. Amen. They're Christian doctors. Listen to me now. This doctor writes scripture. Do you remember when in Timothy, you remember when uh, Paul told Timothy you had something going on with your belly? And you remember what Paul told him? He said, drink a little wine to settle your stomach. He didn't say, just lay in the bed and supernaturally, something's going to take place. No, go, go and get you a little wine. It'll settle, it'll settle your, your stomach. Now, today's wine might rattle your stomach up, so be, be careful there. But uh, um, he was saying, hey, listen, take a little wine. There are natural things where healing can take place as well that you can do. And it's still healing. It's still healing. Now, if the doctors tell you there ain't nothing we can do, you're going to deal with that forever? Ah, now you're a prime candidate. You're a prime candidate to receive supernaturally, miracle-working, creative power from God on high that will just blow the minds of the doctors away. How did that take place? The miracle working power of God. Steve Hawley's example. He gave his testimony last year. An example of someone that was diagnosed, was in the hospital. Doctors told him, listen, you're going to have to do this or that. He started doing it, and he don't even have whatever condition it was anymore. It's gone. They can't find it anymore. It's gone. Amen. And he did it naturally. And guess what? Yeah, put your hands together. And guess what? That's healing. That's healing. Listen, our bodies heal, it, we're, we were created to even heal, heal ourselves. So this whole idea that God's not willing to heal and that was God's will for so-and-so to die of that disease and that was, man, that was God's will for that to take, that is contrary to even your physical body and the way it was designed to be made. And you can't find that in scripture anywhere. Nothing in scripture anywhere that says God was unwilling to heal. It's not found in scripture. One, one particular guy, and I'll, I may wrap it up with this, but one particular guy I knew was a neighbor friend of mine. He would come over to the house. He was diagnosed with stage four leukemia. And the Lord, the Lord spoke to me about it. He would come over and we would talk. Young man, 27 years old, just got married. And um, he, he was coming over and I was just talking to him a little bit, found out. He had told me, man, I went to the doctor. They said I got an aggressive form of leukemia. I said, well, man, we're going to get on it because we're going to attack this thing. I don't play with sickness and disease. Our home does not play. We don't play like, oh, let me just look little Johnny sick. Oh, Johnny, Johnny. We, don't, we don't play like that. We don't even, we don't even, um, we don't even celebrate sick. We, you would rarely even hear us ever say someone in the house was sick. We don't play with that. We don't play. We speak healing because we're not, we're not, we're calling things that be not. As though they were. So we say, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, Zarek J receiving his healing right now. He is, he's a healed little boy. We don't play with it. We don't play. We, don't, we just don't play with it because it's, it's there to kill you. That's right. If you let it run its course, it will kill you. That's what it wants to do. Oh, well, God sent it to teach me something. No, he ain't, no it's, it, it'll kill you. So this particular guy said, man, let's get on it, man. I said, I got some scriptures. We got some confessions. Let's get on it. He said, yeah, man. Yes, I want to. I'm ready. I'm ready. And then he comes back a couple days later. He said, my pastor told me this is God's will for me to have this stage four leukemia. This is the will of God for me. And I'm just going to, I'm going to let God, Lord, have your way. Have your way. That dude was dead in a few weeks. Dead in a few weeks. Gone. And the Lord spoke to me and told him something I've never shared since. I heard it from God. He's going to another church. The Lord spoke to me and, and told him, said, listen, if you come to true life, every time the door is open, I don't even want you to join the church. Don't, give, don't put no money in the offering if God don't lead you to. That ain't the reason why I want you to come. You come every time the door is open. You sit on the front row. Come for three months. The Lord told me three months. Come for three months. Every time the door is open, sit on the front row. In three months, you will be healed. I told him. I, I told him that with the boldness, and I, and, and I told him. I'm gonna tell him something. I'm gonna tell you what else I told him. I said, and you got to be a man in your home and tell your wife, I'm going over there. And you can do what you want, honey, but this is where I got to get. 
Well, he said, I went, he said, I said, now you go pray about it. He come back, yeah, my wife and I decide we're not, we're not going to do that. We're going to do something. No, okay. He was dead. Now, the, the word of the Lord came to him. I ain't never said that since to anybody. And you know what I was going to preach the next three months? Healing. Yeah, we would have been healed, most healed bunch of folks ever in the planet right here. We're healing. Y'all was like, man, pastor, what are you preaching on? Healing. <laughs> healing. We're going to lay hands on them every time the door is open and, and believe God manifestation take place. Healing. Take place. That's how strong that I feel about God's willingness to heal. He is willing to heal you. And some things just take a little time. But that doesn't change his willingness. It doesn't change his eagerness. He's willing to heal. And I was talking to Jeremy Pearsons. You guys know Jeremy, my good friend. And, and I, tell, I told him this story. I said, man, I said, you know, I was, someone asked me before, were you nervous when you declared that to him? Because, you know, you, you, put, you put it out there. I said, I wasn't nervous at all because it was the word of the Lord. Now, when I thought about it later... I got a little nervous, like, oh, Lord, I, this got to work, you know. But when I told him, I was very bold. I said, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. And, and Jeremy said something to me that, that just blessed me. He said, man, look how much God loved him. Right. To where you were going to change three months' worth of sermons for one person. Everybody would have been blessed, but it would have been just for one. That's how much God loved his life. But his pastor told him, this was God's will. Well, your pastor's telling you it is not God's will. It is not God's will for you to be sick. It's not his will for you to be broke, busted, disgusted, headache, ADHD, back pain, upper repertory systems, um, you know, calf issues. It's not God's will you be dealing with a brokenheartedness, pain, uh, pain from divorces, Pain from maybe a, a single mom, single dad issues. That is not God's will. For you to be dealing with that pain, God wants to bring an end to this. He wants to wrap it up, bring closure to it, and let it go. Let it go. Why don't you stand to your feet? I'll wrap up here. I want to pray. I want to pray for you. Lift up your hands and just receive. The, the, healing, the healing power of God is present in here today. And just receive, by faith, just receive his healing power, his presence in this place today. Whatever's crooked, God wants to make straight. Whatever's broken, God wants to bring it back together, restore it better than original. Oh, hallelujah. Father, you are a healer. Your word declares you are a healer. And I, I pronounce your healing over this congregation. Everybody listening online, healing to take place in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I rebuke sickness and disease. I rebuke pain, brokenheartedness. You are rebuked. I command you to stop. I command you to cease to exist. Flu, stop in Jesus' name. Oh, and I command restoration to take place. I hear in my heart just healing in relationships. There are some relationships that, that need a healing, a healing touch in the relationships. Oh, I pronounce healing and declare healing in relationships. Relationships between family members, relationships between spouses, maybe relationships between uh, exes, whatever the case may be. Uh, let there be reconciliation take place in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I command healing, financial healing. Oh, you might have done some things wrong, but... God is a healer, and he can heal those financial miscues. Bring it to a close, to an end, in Jesus' name. Healing in your pocketbook, hallelujah. Healing in your bank accounts. Healing take place. Bring it to an end, Lord. We are redeemed from the curse. We have the blessing 
the empowerment to prosper in every area of our lives. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Healing is here. 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 It's here. Hallelujah. 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 